Hello, it's Adil, uh, bringing you a review of the US markets, uh, which have been quite tricky really to get a hold of. A lot of people are really whip, getting whipsawed and confused as to which way this market's going to go. I remain bearish on the US market, and I'll certainly explain my reasoning uh, shortly, and from a, especially from an intermarket analysis perspective. Okay, let's look at the fundamentals first. So what are the fund, what is the fundamental backdrop? backdrop? Okay, fundamentals, basically, we have missed, we had a weaker GDP last week. Okay, so technically that should have been bearish. The US market sold off one day before the weaker GDP number came out. So, they had it, so the big boys had inside information on that, okay, and they sold the market in advance because they knew exactly what was coming. So the next day, all the selling had, had obviously occurred because they got the tip off inside information, dirty trading, call it what you want, okay? That's the reality, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, there was no absolutely plausible reason for a stock market sell-off the day before, uh, which I think it was a Wednesday. Anyway, um, so basically, stock market sold off. Okay, so that's basically what, what occurred, and um, that basically led to uh, uh, the U.S. markets already having a bearish tone. So the bears had all basically uh, all the people that wanted to sell had gone. So when the GDP report came out, it wasn't that much of a shocker, although it was set up perfectly technically speaking because if you look at the uh the chart in front of you now which is the dow jones industrial index uh, the dow 30 is set up as a perfect double top rising contracting wedge pair flag for formation consolidation a lower obviously red candle and this is set up perfectly for it to go lower okay and um so just give me one second i've got some shorts on here let me just uh, get these shorts closed in the german dax one second so where are we now? Okay, right, that's fine. Okay, no worries. Okay, so basically, um, okay, so basically, so where where are we now? Um, so uh, Miss Yellen, uh, a few days before, ex uh, basically gives her take on the uh, higher inflation number being called noise. Okay. So because she explained the fact that the lower inflation number was no higher inflation number, sorry, was noise, that was being interpreted as her being extra dovish or extremely dovish because she's she realizes that uh, inflation has started to peak. The economic data obviously prior to that had been relatively strong. So therefore, the argument for continued tapering was there. So when she uh, mentioned the fact that higher inflation data was noise, that then put uh, a dovish, an extremely dovish stance uh, with regards to monetary policy from her perspective, even though she tapered as well for 10 billion, which really logically doesn't make sense. If you're going to cause inf call inflation noise and then yet you go ahead and do t a, t a 10 billion taper, where's the logic in that from a central bank from a central bank perspective? If you if you ex if your whole concept is that you want to find deflation, okay, uh, and you all and, and and you've been wanting a higher inflation number, a higher inflation reading. Okay, with obviously better economic data, with the economic data has been coming in slightly better. Okay, and, and the inflation data has certainly been picking up as well. And then all of a sudden, you call the inflation data noise. So that basically means that you want, you want, um, basically, you want the employment side of the equation to rise, but yet you want it without the inflation. Unfortunately, you are getting inflation. You have to deal with inflation, and you have to accept the status quo, and you have to react accordingly. But this woman seems to be deluded. Okay. And she really wants to be extra dovish, but then there are consequences of being dovish, and and she can ignore inflation data rising. But as traders, we can't because obviously that means a higher dollar. So individuals have inter misinterpreted, from my perspective anyway. Obviously, the markets are, can always be positioned wrongly. This is why they're caught off guard. Okay, they they misinterpreted that information, and obviously they've they've basically uh, took the stance that uh, the. Uh, the data there uh, is uh, obviously uh, indicating dovish uh, monetary policy from her, even though they've done a 10 billion taper, which logically doesn't make sense. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, so uh, that means that she had information, she had the weaker GDP number in advance. Okay, so she had access to the weaker GDP read reading well in advance. Hence the reason why she called tape uh, the oil higher inflation data noise, and that's why people sold off on a Wednesday prior to the, the GDP number coming out. Okay. Again, all inside information. This is all the whole market is rigged, and that's the way in which you have to think. Think the way these individuals manipulate and distort the markets and try and read in between. And obviously, that's where we fit in as day traders, where we just ride the manipulation or ride the wave, whichever way they want to uh, obviously uh, cause the markets to flow. 
it's just that we have to read between the lines and think the way they're thinking etc etc okay so that's basically the, the backdrop okay uh, so the whole concept is the reason why the Nikkei or then should I say the Nasdaq if you look at the Nasdaq here you've got a clear divergence between the Nasdaq and between uh, other markets as you, I've just shown you there the Dow 30 has got a double top rising contracting wedge pattern is bearish yet the Nasdaq is breaking to new highs why does the Nasdaq break to new highs because they use the Nasdaq and that's the the main tool that they the Federal Reserve uses in order to pump global stock markets higher in order to manipulate the stock market higher because they pump extra money all that money that they pump at zero percent or wherever the QE money goes okay they keep pumping they keep pumping and and how they do it they, they, they utilize the excess cash reserves to buy Nasdaq or technology stocks because they realize it's very sensitive to disposable income as technology is because as, as you'll appreciate me and you or we earn more or we have more dis more disposable income then we'll consume more electronic devices goods etc etc so it tends to be very sensitive to uh, the growth in the economy and they realize that those stocks are generally the first will generally be the first to move etc etc and also the good regards to social media etc etc there's certainly a good story there in terms of growth so that's the equation folks okay that's the equation right so just give me one second let me just close these positions one second I'm still here, just closing some, uh, running a live analysis service and just closing some short positions here, short euro stocks, short uh, DAX, close up plus 40 here, so, okay, let's have a look, bear with me, okay, I'll certainly continue to explain what I think is going to happen, just with me okay I think I should be back up to normal now okay so yes that's that's the equation okay so the Nasdaq is used to manipulate the stock markets high even though the rest of the stock markets don't agree I want to go in the opposite direction unfortunately folks there's nothing that we can do that's the way Miss Yellen has organized her PPT the plunge protection team to protect the markets from going down especially when there's a technical pattern that's, that's screaming to go lower okay uh, and as you can see here uh, that's just the way in which they do it unfortunately it's a shame but that's reality I'm afraid and, and if you're going to ignore deny that ignore that then you do that at your own you know peril and you're got not really going to improve your trading from my perspective as soon as you realize that the manipulation exists and this is the way in which they work and these are the dirty games that are played then you can front run those games or you can uh, adjust your trading style your trading strategy and your trading mindset uh, and uh, obviously uh, react and obviously uh, plan accordingly okay that's just all part of the game okay so Okay, so that's basically the out of the backdrop. Okay, so Nasdaq's making new highs. The U.S. markets certainly are, are, are stubborn and they don't want to fall. And obviously, the mindset is the fact that Miss Yellen, given her uh, reference to inflation data being noise, with regards to the weaker GDP as well, so that's given her some clout now. So she's got weaker GDP plus inflation data, according to inflation data noise. So they think that she's going to be extra dovish. So there may be a possibility of either pausing, tapering, or stopping tapering. Uh, or a possibility of rates interest rates remaining low for an extended 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 period of time but having said that economic data thereafter has come in stronger so she really is in a conundrum from my perspective she sounds as if she doesn't really understand what's going on and somebody who doesn't understand what's going on is very dangerous and can actually call a stock market sell-off a very powerful one as well so you have to take all that those uh, uh, those uh, explanation that I've given all into context okay so very dangerous okay the fact that she doesn't really understand what she's doing the fact that she's calling inflation noise is from my perspective is an amateur okay and uh, doesn't really understand monetary policy okay uh, you 
there's no way you can call inflation data something that's a fact and noise okay unless unless you have access to other information that, that other people don't have or you have access to information such as the GDP number that's going to come out and she wanted to soften the blow and prevent any major sell-off in the markets by stating that inflation data was noise and giving a dovish stance in advance so that prevents the bears from having a real field day okay from really having a proper buffet with regards to shorting the market so this is this is possibly one reason same thing with mr carney how he's giving being giving conflicting signals because he wants the sterling bulls I mean somebody like mr soros to come in and just buy the buy the sterling outright and force the markets higher so he has to fire off the flares and confuse the uh, the average individual or average trader in order to prevent any major move from happening from one direction to the other okay so very very important okay so um that's basically hope and hopefully that's clarified or certainly explained uh the the understanding with regards to u.s markets okay so the backdrop really is technically supposed to be dovish but yet miss yellen doesn't really understand what's going on although the economic data that's coming out is saying hawkish okay tapering is in full swing so therefore hawkish if you take morphine away from the patient what happens he goes cold turkey okay and that's exactly where this market is on the verge of doing okay so if we take all these factors into account okay very important and uh, basically the conclusion is that the stock market is on the verge of selling off a major reversal is at hand okay so now let's have a look at the technical backdrop okay uh, now also do bear in mind that the euro is obviously floating higher is at 1.365 so europe is in deep trouble okay because the whole concept for europe was the fact that they had to uh, the stock market had to uh, rally higher on the anticipation of QE. So if German data comes out higher than expected, or inflation data comes out higher than expected on on, on a Friday, okay, that causes the euro to float higher. You've had weaker GDP numbers around the week. The euro is going to go even higher. Therefore, what happens? Stock market sell off. So Europe will lead the sell off. The Asian markets have been relatively weak last week. Today they've had a pop, but generally speaking, they are relatively weak. So there's no catalyst from Asia to really propel the markets higher. If anything, they're playing catch up with Europe and, and the US. And if the U and the US is now into resistance, then if the US reverses, what do you think will happen to the, to to Europe? It will go into even more of a tailspin, even more of a reversal. So remember that as well. So all these factors certainly have to take all of them into account one by one. Very 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 important. Okay, right. So now let's have a look at the market from a technical perspective. Okay. And then we'll see exactly what's happening here. So S&P 500, this is the real conundrum, this. So basically, the market breaks out. It comes back, retests the previous breakout level. Sells below, obviously, weaker GDP number. That was the catalyst to prevent the S&P or cause the S&P 500 to have an en masse sell-off. What happens? We pull, pull below, go back above, and we're still fighting that range. So that 1950 level is still the battleground. So the bulls have to hold 1950. If they don't, bye bye okay we're going back to 1930 possibly break this key break uh, bre uh, black trend line okay so that's basically what we're looking at although we have had a thrust higher on a stronger volume which is certainly a good signal but then the volume thereafter hasn't been uh, uh, very impressive so although they have been holding the 1950 level which we have to give them credit for but yeah for now let's just let's just remain from my perspective i'm remaining definitely remaining bearish especially after you've got a hanging man candle like that certainly it's not a good sign certainly showing that the bulls are running out of stream okay so uh, if you look at a 60 minute chart of the s p 500 again weakness from my perspective really hasn't made a higher high so that's not a good sign at all so you're looking for potential weakness 10 minute chart we seem to have hit the resistance zone around this level here you've got gap level around here at 1950 1960 region sorry so 1960 will be good support okay with regards to the s p 500 so from my perspective s p 500 looks exhausted certainly wants to reverse down 30 you've already explained a rising contracting wedge pattern bear flag in formation double top is in we're going lower okay with regards to the dow transportation index again double top is in we're looking for a lower high looking to move lower especially with oil prices rising remember uh, oil prices rising we're going lower okay so with regards to tra dow transports okay so let's have a look at the semiconductor semicons as you've already noticed uh if you look at your daily charts so uh, he's, he's exhausted now we've broken the bullish channel once you break the bonus channel, we all know what happens next, folks. We're going down, okay? Again, this is why it's very confusing. When the semicons have broken the bullish channel on the verge of down, why is the Nasdaq making a new high? Manipulation, okay? They want to keep this market afloat. They'll do anything to keep it afloat, okay? 
especially after all the QE that they pumped into the market. How can they justify doing that? Anyway, so for now, uh, you've got higher, uh, you've got this pattern here. Okay, so you've got perfect double top, right shoulders going in, 50% retracement. Uh, you can see double top is in, uh, bias change principle one, which I teach my students. When a double top is in, double top, market top. Okay, so uh, that's how I like, I like to explain it. So flat tops equals market drops, as Oscar, uh, the uh, Oscar states once, or Oscar, Mr. Carboni always refers to. Okay, so basically we are into this resistance zone. You will see some uh, uh, a gap fill level here, which technically has already closed. You've got 200 MA. So the semiconductors, from my perspective, have a H and S formation. We need to hit the 200 MA. Certainly going lower. Okay, so if the semicons are going lower, what do you think will happen to the Nasdaq? We go lower. Okay, biotechs. This is an interesting one. Okay, so daily chart inverted head and shoulders formation. The target's more or less been reached now. Okay, we've hit the IHS target. We, we, I mean, we're probably about four or five points off, but I don't expect that to be hit now. I expect a nice reversal. Okay, uh, looking for a reversal here. Uh, we've had a topping tail, and we've had Doji, Doji, Doji hanging man. Okay, what does that tell you? Exhaustion. So where do you think the Nasdaq's going? Lower. Okay. So that's basically what we're observing, and that's what we're looking at. Okay. So uh, we uh, again, you've got the H uh, and S formation on the 60-minute chart. You can focus. There you go. You've had a failable flag pattern. When a pattern like that fails, it retraces or more, or more, or almost 100%. That's a very weak sign. Right shoulders in. Here we go, and down we go. Okay. So we're going back to test this level here. What do you think will happen to the Nasdaq? Down it goes. Okay. Remember that. So if the semicons and the and the uh, and the um, the biotechs are uh, signaling weakness, and you've got Dow Transportation signaling weakness, what does that tell you? Think. It means we're going lower. Okay. It means we're going lower because your leaders are telling you lower. Your laggards will follow. Your laggards are Nasdaq. Okay. The manipulated index that they're trying to keep afloat, especially on a Friday evening, okay, or Friday afternoon. So certainly from my perspective, uh, technically, certainly it's a very, very weak, very, very weak technically. Let's have a look at the Russell. Okay, Russell has been lagging anyway, regardless. We've been stuck here while so the indices are certainly tried to make a high. This has been lagging, not a good sign. Again, into resistance, horizontal resistance, and we're looking to obviously reverse here and move in the opposite direction, double top triple top call it what you want okay we're into resistance not a good sign okay not a good sign okay folks so that's basically my argument from a technical perspective as you can see which I've presented to you because the Russell generally leads the S&P and you got biotechs and semicons leading the Nasdaq okay and obviously Dow transportation leading uh, the Dow Jones okay so certainly not looking good okay um, certainly not looking good from my perspective at all okay um, and we certainly are looking for a potential reversal and, and I continue to remain bearish, especially given the fact that Miss Yellen hasn't got a clue what she's doing. She sounds very indecisive. Mr. Carney doesn't have a clue what he's doing either. He sounds indecisive, clueless, okay? And then you've got Mr. Uh, Mr. Draghi, who's already referred to the fact that he doesn't want to cut rates any further from his perspective. The end of the rate cutting cycle is near. The Germans will not do QE, so the euro, hence the reason why the euro is popping to 1.365, even with higher... Uh, even with the weaker uh, data, German data this morning, yet the euro still remains afloat. What does that tell you? It's inherently strong, okay? It's inherently strong. Why? Because they don't anticipate QE. No QE, no Kool-Aid, no Kool-Aid, no stock markets going higher. No stock markets going higher in Europe. What do you think happens to Asia? Go lower. What do you think happens to the US? We go lower, okay? So put one and one together. That's my argument, folks, for going lower. I can't make it any more clearer. Uh, again, last week, like I stated, this is the same philosophy, same strategy that I teach my students on live analysis service. Uh, last week, minus 180 points. Very frustrating week last week. Today, I've started off this morning. I had minus 40 on the, on the German DAX, stopped out even with weak data. I reshorted it, and obviously, I've made back the plus 40 points with my shorts closed earlier. Uh, I've got an active position on the, uh, the, the CAC and the NASDAQ. So... And you know, and based on this video, I think you'll already work out which way, which direction I expect it to go. Okay, folks, I think that's enough uh, explanation. The uh, only thing I will add is, last week, why was it so hard to read? You had sterling going higher, which means FTSE lower. You had euro going higher, which means Europe lower. And you had the yen going higher, which means, um, obviously, Nikkei lower. Nikkei lower, the carry trade is being reversed. Therefore, the US market should go lower as well. 
adding the fact that you had a weaker GDP number and that obviously that didn't and given the fact that there was a higher inflation reading the US market top should technically have been in and that's what I was playing for that's why I was very aggressive in my positions last week but that didn't transpire that's trading folks okay the week before I made 310 points the next week I make minus 180 I'm still net net technically if you look at the two weeks I'm still higher okay it doesn't make a difference folks it's all trading you get frustrating weeks you have frustrating times as a trader but you must remain steadfast remain calm remain positive and adhere to your trading strategy that gives you 200 points a week week in week out for the last 10 years that's basically my trading style and that's what I've been doing for a very long time folks okay it's it's not the ability for you to consistently get the points which is very very good from my perspective it's the ability to read the markets correctly and understand why you've gone wrong as well and realize why the markets are illogical and irrational and from that perspective if you understand that you'll remain calm if you remain calm you'll always exceed your target okay that's my philosophy that's my understanding and this is just one a little insight into how I think and how I trade especially in the live analysis service okay folks risk on risk off wax on wax off is my motto uh, adios amigos